Hey guys, welcome back to Adventures in Aviators. Today we are hiking down to Captain Cook Monument on the big island of Hawaii. If you love nature and the uniqueness of this planet, we encourage you to subscribe and like this video. Subscribe and like this video. We love jumping in to all of the different unique places this world has to offer. So you may have seen some of our other hiking videos here on the big island. Uh, one was up at Pololu Valley in the north. The other was down at Greensand Beach in the south. And Captain Cook is going to be a lot closer than either of those if you're coming from Kona, but it's going to be a much more strenuous hike. So let's jump in and, and see where we're at today. So Captain Cook as a town is kind of one of the last places where you can find any kind of supplies or stores before you head down south and you don't hit a lot until you get back up to really the Hilo side of the island. So Captain Cook is, it's about 30 minutes south of Kona town. So not that far away. Um, it's probably about 10 minutes from Keahoe which is where we live, and so uh, that would be considered like South Kona. So it's really close to Kona town. You'll come at it probably from Highway 11, which is the main highway, but if you're coming from Keho, you'll use the bypass. But from Highway 11, you will hit a light. You're gonna go straight, and you'll see some parking spots right along your left. Now, if you're coming up from the bypass, of course, then you'll turn right at the light, and then immediately look on your left for parking spots over there. And that is the parking. It doesn't look like much. There's not gonna be any signs for the Captain Cook hike, uh, but it's just gonna be that first spot on your left as you pass the light there. Now you may have seen the snorkeling video that we put out about Captain Cook uh, a couple months ago, and this is a great snorkel site, but this is not a stroll to the beach. So you need to understand this. You're gonna descend 1400 feet as a part of this hike which also means that you're going to have to ascend 1400 feet at the end. So it's a significant climb and uh, descend to get down on this trail. So as you begin the trail, uh, it's gonna be across the road from parking. And it, like I said, it's not well marked, but uh, you can see the video here. Uh, you're just gonna kind of follow this little path that goes through there. There's like one little parking stall right next to the path. So you can kind of look for that and begin down there. And it'll kind of just feel like an odd trail and some tall grass as you're going but you'll know that you're on the right path when you see the big broken down car that's just right in the middle of the path as well so that's a good indicator that you are on the right path in case you're feeling a little worried that uh, you're not in the right place uh, keep going through that you'll see that the first uh, gosh almost quarter to half mile of this there's there's a ton of I guess I would call it elephant grass tall grasses and this trail isn't exactly maintained uh, especially well and so that's gonna be brushing up against you. Uh, and the reason I mention that is because we both, Michelle and I, had kind of nicks and cuts on our legs by the time we got through this. And you see Michelle didn't wear you know, sleeves or anything like that. It's, it's all over you and it's, it can encroach as you're walking. And so just be prepared for that. So a long sleeve, a dry fit or something like that is not a bad idea. It helps to protect you from the sun as well. Of course, make sure you have all the sun protection on this hike. It's very, very exposed. As you descend down here, there'll be marker signs that show you there's eight of them total. So just like gives a one and a two and a three. So I didn't exactly understand what that was. I believe that it is every quarter of a mile. So it's basically two miles down and then two miles back up. After you get through the elephant grass, it does open up quite a bit and you get some really pretty views of the area. There are definitely homes that you're gonna be walking near, uh, especially for the first part of this hike. And so just be mindful of that as you're uh, rolling through there. And if you go early in the morning, you definitely wanna keep an eye out for nature. And really by nature that you need to keep an eye out for, I'm talking about the hogs here. Uh, hogs are a big thing on the big island and uh, they're not always super friendly. So just be mindful, uh, make maybe a little bit of noise if you hear something and, and typically they'll run away from you. Uh, but you'll see evidence of them uh, as you take this hike down especially if it's early in the morning would be the time to, to watch out for hogs. And as you see here, you're gonna have some beautiful views as you descend down. Uh, it is very rocky, so definitely keep an eye out for where you're going. Uh, this is why I recommend boots, because you know it just takes one turn of the ankle to really um, put a damper on your vacation as well as your hike. Uh, and another thing to note down here is, is your cell service is not gonna be great. Uh, if It's very possible that your cell service is gonna be non-existent. And there's no facilities down here. There's there's no road that goes uh, down here. This is why it's such a, a kind of a gem is because it's not easy to access. So if you do hurt yourself down here, you're kind of on your own. So I would suggest bringing a first aid kit and some of those other things that you would prepare on a you know similar hike where there's not going to be easy access to emergency care. 
as you come down to the bottom of the hill, the path kind of opens up a little bit more, and if you go straight ahead, there's a little bit of a pretty kind of isolated beach over there to the right that you can find, which we kind of got a little confused as to go into the monument. Um, but it was really pretty and it was well worth the stop uh, to look around over there and you get a lot of that lava rock which again is it makes it hard to enter the water here because it's just kind of lava rock everywhere there's not a lot of beach true beach access on the big island um, but i definitely recommend exploring this area a little bit but the path to go over to the captain cook monument is a left and so there's kind of you'll follow the walls that have been built with the rocks uh, to the left and eventually you'll come across the big Captain Cook monument. The monument itself is, is big, it's cool monolith, it's neat and worth checking out. And then again, this would be the spot where you would jump in for your snorkel and you can check out our video on that. Now the key thing about the Captain Cook area is again, there's nothing down there, so definitely bring, I would suggest packing a lunch and making a day of it. There's plenty of shade down at the bottom for you to kind of chill and hang out and be um, you know, protected from the sun. But once you start that hike back up, it's gonna be brutal. All right, guys, so we uh, made it down here, did our snorkel, it was excellent. What a great treat at the end of a pretty decent hike on your way down, your legs are feeling it for sure by the end. And now we started our way back up and that time has been about three hours. So three hours from when we left our car to when we're starting back up the trail. So definitely make sure you have water, some snacks. I just crushed my granola bar uh, and excited that I had that with me. Uh, and now we're gonna go make it all the way back up and find some lunch. After we've done this hike, I've asked a bunch of people, hey, have you done Captain Cook? Have you done Captain Cook? Lots of people have, and they've all done it once. And I'm probably gonna fall into that category as well. It was fun to do once, but man, it is a beast coming back up. You know, and you, you don't have something to look forward to. You're just at the end, and so you're exhausted and you're tired, especially if you snorkel. Um, so that's why bringing that water is super important. We uh, used our water bottle trick that we talked about in some of our other hiking videos where we freeze several water bottles and then uh, keep adding our water into our frozen water bottle so we have that nice cold water the whole time. Have a great time on this hike. It is very scenic, uh, a really cool blend of history and nature. As you explore the big island, it's pretty close to town, um, but it is a beast of a hike, especially on the way back up. Uh, and I encourage you to bring hiking poles if you're worried about your knees, cake on all that sunscreen, bring the sun protection for sure. You're pretty darn close to the equator. And uh, you might catch some mid-afternoon shade this part of the island does get some mid-afternoon shade but that means you're descending in the heat i mean so you're just i want you to be really mindful that you don't get heat exhaustion uh, as a part of this hike because it is can easily happen when you're gaining this much altitude and putting this much effort into a hike so please be safe out there enjoy your time on the big island and we will see you next time